Mike Ekman here, and today I have a Bell & Howell Photon 35mm rangefinder camera. And in this video, I'm going to show you the proper loading procedure for loading in a fresh roll of film. I have some Kodak T-Max right here. The reason I'm making this video is um, I think of all the 35mm cameras I've ever handled, this one not only has the most unique process, but it also has the most steps. So I thought a video might be useful to help show how it's done. Uh, now this camera is a spring-wound clockwork motorized drive camera, meaning that pressing the shutter release fires the shutter. Um, you don't ever have to wind it with a lever or anything like that. Uh, it's one of the camera's best features. Um, but the first step in order to load film into it is to wind it up, and that's done via this fold-out lever. You fold it out and turn it clockwise. So you want to turn it until you feel resistance. Uh, I found that with a full wind, I can get 20 exposures, so I felt the resistance there. Uh, so you could back it off a little bit so that you can fold it back down. Now the camera's fully wound. The next step is to open it up, so you slide down this latch and open the back of the camera. And then you take your film and you want to put it into the take up or the, the supply side. And this is spring wound. So you should just easily be able to push that in there. All right, that's in place. And then you want to extend the leader and put it into the slot. So I don't know if you saw that at first, but there were these zigzag lines in there that kind of help grip the... Uh, the leader. Okay, now that I have that in there, uh, the next step is to wind up the take-up spool so that more of the leader is securely attached to it. But when you turn this knob, you'll notice nothing happens. The reason for that is for the take-up spool to spin, it needs to be activated by the shutter release, which is done with the motor. And of course, doing this won't do that. So in order to temporarily disable the spring wind motorized action, uh, you have to first press this button up here. This is not a shutter release. You push, hold, and pull up on the take up knob. Uh, you heard it click. And now that I do that, I can turn it like this. You want to make sure that it travels properly. Okay. Now you want to make sure that enough of it is spun so that the perforations in the film are engaged onto the teeth here. I'm going to give it a little bit more just to make sure I have it. I'd rather, I'd rather waste a little more of the leader than risk it just spinning in there freely and not advancing at all. So now that I have this across the film plane, if you want to provide a little extra tension on the supply side, you can turn this, but as you can see, nothing's happening here either. You got to pull up on this, and now I can spin that, and it's backing off the film in the cassette to give a little bit more tension. So let's close that, close that, close the camera. Now the next step is to fire the shutter twice so that you pull enough of the leader uh, onto the take-up spool so that you have fresh film ready to go inside, uh, inside the camera. Now the shutter release is this button right here. Now this sliding thing is the shutter release lock. Normally you want to leave it like this so when you push the button nothing happens. But if you get close and move this down, you'll see a little red dot appears there. When the red dot is visible, it means the shutter release is uh, ready to go. So we're gonna fire it two times. Okay, the camera should be ready now for its first exposure. I'm gonna lock it again. You wanna reset the uh, exposure counter because that's not done automatically. And you simply do that by rotating it to zero. Okay, I've turned that to zero. Uh, and then just to make sure you have enough tension to keep shooting, you can advance it again. Fold it down. Uh, the camera's ready to go. Uh, remember to have the shutter release locked when you're not using it because this thing is always ready to fire. So if you have it in a bag or something and it accidentally taps this button, it's gonna keep wasting exposures uh, when you're not ready. Uh, there we go. There we go. That's the proper loading procedure for uh, 35 millimeter film on a Bell and Howell Photon camera.